Yeah, this seems to be a new feature in Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Tell us, yes, this scary thing. So starting on your backs, we're going to be thinking about our feet on our backs. Well, actually, the first thing we're going to do on our backs is not thinking about our feet so much. It's just letting the head roll a little bit to the right and to the left. So easing your head from side to side. And obviously, those of you on Zoom, the, the recording is just of me. It's not of all of you. So it'll be relieved to hear. Good. That's it. And so a couple more times, let your head roll from side to side. That's good. And just, and Linda, think about softening and relaxing the jaw. So not just Linda, everyone. We can roll the head from side to side, but it's helpful if we have perhaps a little bit of space between our teeth, a little bit of space between our lips and stay soft in the jaw. So we can ease our head from side to side. And then settle the centre of the back of your head on the floor in a way that feels comfortable to you. And let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. So we're just starting that process of slowing down a little bit and really being able to take the time to feel our body. Fitness. Also going off the door, all okay. Okay, and then if your legs are long, you're going to bend your knees and stand your feet on the floor. And what I'd like you to do is start working with one foot. Maybe start with the right, just so that you don't have to think about it. And you're going to start by tapping your toes on the floor. Yeah, so pick up your toes and tap them on the floor. Good, and do that a few times, just in the right foot. So the heel stays on the floor, that's it, and you lift the toes away from the ground, good. And then can you do the opposite movement? Can you lift the heel and tap the heel on the floor a few times? And sometimes if this is harder, you might need to slide your foot further away from your pelvis. And then try to alternate, so tap the toes, tap the heel. So you're sort of tipping your foot on the floor and you might well feel this more in the ankle, that's it, good. Okay. And then from there, just let that movement go and fold that knee into your chest. So fold your right knee into your chest. And then you can lengthen that leg up towards the ceiling and give your leg a little shake out if you like. So whatever, you know, when, your leg, when you take your leg up towards the ceiling, whatever you feel like doing, good. Very nice. And then from there, you can fold your knee back into your chest and then just gently lengthen your leg out on the floor and give your leg a bit of a roll on the floor. Good. Yeah, roll or a bounce, whatever feels nice. And then come back to bending that right knee, standing the right foot on the floor. And we'll do the same thing on the left side. So start by tapping your left toes on the floor. So coming up onto your heel. And when we do this, it's just an opportunity to drop down into our feet. So when you've tapped your toes a few times, then start to tap your heel on the floor. And when you've done that a few times, then start to alternate toes and then heel. And also notice how that feels in the ankle. Maybe our awareness comes up our leg a little bit. Hi, May. We're starting lying down. Are you ready? Hi. Yeah. Okay. And from there, and May, you can just settle on the ground. From there, you're going to fold that left knee into your chest. And May, just, I think, arrive and join in with the next thing. You haven't missed anything too much. We're just focusing on the feet a little bit. So once you've folded your knee into your chest, you can take your leg up to the ceiling and give it a shake out or whatever you like. I was just thinking it's quite nice to slap, slap the leg. It's so popular. Good, good. And then again, gently lower that leg down onto the floor and, and lengthen the leg out on the ground and give it a bit of a roll and give it a bit of a bounce. So, yes, so May, I think at this point now, maybe it would be good to start to join 
in and what we're going to do is now bend both knees, stand both feet on the floor. And I'd like you to come to start just tilting your pelvis on the floor. So tipping your pelvis towards your face and away from your face. So this one where we arch our lower back away from the floor a little bit. And then let the lower back lengthen out and flatten. So I don't know, how does that feel, Jan? Yeah, that's everything like feeling this is. <laughs> Everything's good, you know, moving it's okay. good. Yeah, yeah. I think this whatever we're feeling, that one usually does feel feel good, doesn't it? So I just got this I just pulled the muscle on the back. So from from tilt that's what I took worry, from tilting your pelvis, and again, Marie, your feet could be a little bit wider, I reckon. From tilting your pelvis, maybe not that wide though, <laughs> come up. I'd like you to come up into sort of maybe two or three easy bridge poses. So you could carry on that tilting movement, you know, sort of letting your lower back flatten out. And you're not trying to go very high, but just really seeing how it feels to let your pelvis come away from the floor and some of your vertebrae. That's it, good. Good. And sinking down into your feet, so very nice. If we're thinking about bridge pose, and yeah, that's it. Very nice. Francis, think about sending your knees forwards over your feet. I, yeah, I was wondering whether you would, yeah, whether you should bring your heels in a little bit. <laughs> so I was in two minds about, ah, uh, yes, that looks, that looks better. Good. Good. So yes, in your own time, maybe three bridge poses, keeping it easy. And just focusing on this feeling of planting down into the feet, particularly trying to really sink the heels in, the sort of middle of the heels into the ground. Yeah, Marie, I would try with your feet slightly wider, actually, now. <laughs> it's sort of interesting, isn't it? I was just thinking after a year or whatever it is of doing. Good. And when you've done three bridge poses, then you're going to fold your knees into your chest. You fold both knees into your chest, so it might be nice once you've folded your knees into your chest to do a little bit of rocking from side to side. You know, we've got, we can rock from side to side. We can circle around the back of our pelvis. We could also, if you like, if you like, take your legs up to the ceiling and give them shake out. It's almost like this. And we're then going to, yeah, we've done all of these things, whatever we like, with our knees folded into us or our legs going to the ceiling. We're going to come back to thinking about our feet. And what we're going to be doing is dropping our feet, with our knees into our chest. We're going to few times drop our feet down onto the floor and see if we can find that feeling of letting the feet drop so that's it we're trying to we're trying to let go of the feet so they fall down onto the floor together they might not fall down together good and where do they land Yes, interesting, isn't it? Because when your feet land, Marie, they land closer together, <laughs> so, which is fine. It's not... Good. OK, so just do that perhaps once or twice more, dropping your feet down onto the floor. Okay, and then the next time you drop your feet down, let them stay there. And then we're going to do a little bit of lifting the pelvis and dropping the pelvis. So it doesn't have to be it's a small movement. Let your pelvis come up maybe an inch or so off the floor and then see if you can drop it back down. And this, you know, sometimes I think people think this is a jarring movement. So Jan, I don't know. Yeah, it actually can be really, it's a movement that's about releasing tension around the pelvis. So actually it can be really helpful for tight lower backs. Um, so you lift your pelvis and then you just let it drop back down with a little bit of a thud. And if you don't like it, don't do it. But <laughs> I really like that one. So if you like it, do it a couple more times. don't just let yourself settle for a moment that's very nice good and 
We'll then come back to the one where we are dropping our feet. But what we're going to do is you drop your feet and then as, as soon as you drop your feet, you go up into bridge pose. I think you know this one. So you fold your knees into your chest. You drop your feet down and as soon as your feet reach the ground, you come up into bridge pose. So I just want you to try that a few times. Just drop the feet down straight into bridge pose and see if you can make the sort of two things as as instantaneous as possible. That's it. Feet go down, pelvis comes up. Feet go down, pelvis comes up. So can it almost be part of the same movement? Very nice. So you could do this a couple more times if you like. Lovely. Good. That's it. You can do that once more if you like, and then just settle quietly on your backs. So just let yourself have a couple of quiet breaths now on your back. Yes, if you, it might be nice if you wanted to lengthen your legs out for a moment. We've got one more. We're just going to do one sort of twisty thing on our backs before we come over into standing. Yes, so lengthening the legs out if it's comfortable is probably a nice thing to do. And just before we come off our backs, gather your attention into your breathing. So it might be that you'd like to bring your hands onto the front of your body. And just come to feeling the movement of your breath in your body. Feeling the breath coming in, feeling the breath leaving you. See if you can feel two more cycles of breath moving through you. The breath coming in, the breath leaving. And then when you're ready, you're going to bend your knees, stand your feet on the floor. And you're going to cross your arms over your chest. So I think we all know this one where we've got, that's it, one arm on top of the other. Good. And so what I'd like you to do now is start to let your knees and your elbows and your head all tilt to the right and then to the left. So everything's moving in the same direction. That's nice. And we just come to that nice sort of rocking side to side across the back of our body. Lovely, and it's really up to you how big or small you make this movement. I suppose what's most important is to find an enjoyable, comfortable, easy, flowing movement. That's it, side to side, across the back of your body. And in your own time, you can eventually end up on one side, having a few breaths on your side and contemplating the prospect of coming over into standing. So when you have a few breaths on your side, you don't have to keep your arms crossed. Just make yourselves comfortable. Yes, it might be using one arm as a little cushion under the side of your head. It's really nice. Yes. I just can't make it. I really, really like it. Time too. Okay, so let's make our way over into standing. Uh, I'm just going to check. I've got the back door open. It's a bit more air coming Feels quite airy. I've got air there as well. Yeah. Yeah. So let's first of all in standing. We will settle in standing in a moment, but I think we'll start off with um this loose. Loose swinging twist, very nice. And just as you do this, seeing how does it feel in your body? You know, what presents itself to you in your body today? So we've had a little bit of discussion here about, you know, particular, I suppose, tightnesses or injuries. It might also just be what you've been doing over the last, you know, yesterday, possibly earlier today. Good. 
So a couple more times. That's lovely. Swinging your arms from side to side. You can let your arms slap on. <coughs> and then we'll let this go and we'll see how it feels to settle in standing so particularly as we have got this little focus on feet today so i'd like you to start by just looking down at your feet um we probably often do this in standing so just looking at your feet settling them on the floor in what seems like a sort of sensible um, organized position for you and then stop looking at your feet and if you're happy closing your eyes close your eyes and just start to sway a little bit from side to side. So this is interesting. Not only can we feel the weight sort of shifting over one leg and foot in the other, but it might be that we feel more comfortable over on one side. So, you know, if we're feeling a bit twingy in one hip or one side of the lower back or the back of the pelvis, then we're going to notice that as we shift our weight from side to side. Just a couple more times, shifting the weight from side to side. And then seeing if little by little you can then settle down, settle into standing when you're not, you're not holding yourself rigid and still, but you're, yeah, you're not intentionally swaying anymore. And then let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. And we're going to move down into a forward bend. So it's really up to you. You can come to that part way, that sort of halfway house where you're resting your elbows on your thighs. Or you can move all the way into a forward bend. Let your arms go, let your head go. Let your knees bend as much as you like. So just be quite, um, what was I going to say? Sensing your body and just what your body needs right now. Yes, and I think that mid of the neck, it's just really nice to be able to let the head go. Um, but it might feel that you can't let it go as much as usual. I don't know. It looks lovely. Good. So just give yourself a couple of breaths in your forward bend. And just really noticing how the body feels at this stage and not feeling that you're having to push yourself to get anywhere in particular. And while you're down there, just before we come up, just have a little look at your toes because we're going to roll back up into standing and we're going to do some toe exercises, which I think we've done for a while. But um, you know, it was the fact that we're finally in sandals or that my feet seem not in such a good state after all the lockdowns. So when you come back up into standing, what I'd like you to do first of all is just a bit of lifting and lowering all of your toes. So can you pick all your toes up off the floor and place them back down again? And what we're going to do is do some of these toe exercises. If it's hard to get your toes to do what I'm saying, you can come down into a forward bend and use your fingers. So it's, it's why we've been down in the forward bend. So what I'd like you to do then is pick all your toes up and try and put the little toes and the big toes down on their own. Okay, so this, <laughs> so this might be a point at which you want to bend forwards and hold the big toes and the little toes down. Also notice with your big toes, where are they going? Are they going straight forwards or are they going towards the other toes? And see if you can have them going more straight forwards if possible. That might be where you need to use them. It's quite easy to do it with one thing, but it's supposed to be the same yeah. time again. Yeah. <laughs> it's just trying to send these messages a long way down, isn't it? If if you can either holding your toes down or they're staying down, see if you can then lift your three middle toes up and down. Um, so it's this feeling that can we plant through the big toe and little toe and lift the three middle toes up and down? I always think these are quite sort of old school things. <laughs> let's just um, let's just give each foot a shake out for a minute, and then we'll try the other um, the other old school toe exercise. Again, you might need to use your fingers. So this is the one where you lift all your toes up, and you try and put them down one by one. So little toe, next littlest, and so on. You're trying to put your toes down one by one and then pick them up one by one. So big toe, next littlest. And this is probably when you feel your fingers starting to do it. Mm -hmm. So if it didn't quite happen, you could try this time going into a forward bend and just holding your toes down one by one. I get the sense that maybe that one was a little bit easier. A little bit easier. Little bit easier. Yeah. So it's interesting. Bunny, so. 
Yes, you see, this is what I found. My sort of bunion eater seems to have got a little bit worse. Mine has a bit. I think it might be all the walking. I just think maybe yes. it's all the walking. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's good, so good to do this. Yeah, so this is yeah. partly why we're, we're doing it's these. Because mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought I probably wasn't the only person who's done it. So again, have a little shake out of each foot. And let's just come into... No, let's settle the feet down and just see how it feels to come into quite a simple standing balance. So I'd like you again to look at your feet, see if you can plant down through the big toe and the little toe and let the three middle toes be long and relaxed. So it's the big toe and little toe, but particularly the base of the big toe and little toe. When so you'll say the base, do you mean that? Yeah, I mean the or sort of ball. Yes, the ball, of the ball, ball, the ball but the sort of yeah. underside of the ball, yeah. Um, so your feet might feel slightly more active, I don't know, than they usually do. So let's just see how that feels in balancing. So you're going to bring your hands into prayer pose. And then just very simply, you could here just do a little bit of swaying. Choose a foot to stand on. And you're going to bring one foot to stand on top of the other. That's all you're going to do here. And just, yeah, see what happens to your standing foot. So quite often, as we bring one foot off the floor, our standing foot then starts to wobble a bit between the inner and outer edge of the foot. So as much as possible, we're just maybe thinking about settling down through our heel, through the outer edge of our foot and across the whole of the ball of the foot into the base of the big toe. And see if you can have a couple more breaths here. Let the breath come in, let the breath leave you. Good. So you can come down, you can have a little bit of shake out. And we can try the same thing on the other side. So again, just before you come stand on your foot, just with this attention, which we don't always do, we don't always need to do, Planting down, settling down, the big toe, the little toe, the base of the big toe and little toe. Settling down through the heels, bringing your hands into prayer pose. So just maybe feeling those three points of your feet on the floor. Heels, base of the big toe, base of the little toe. And then starting to shift your weight over onto the other foot. And how does it feel to settle onto the other foot? And also, then how is your foot contacting the floor? So can we feel, you know, can we feel that we're settling down through the middle of the heel? It might be that we're wobbling a bit towards our inner and outer heel. It might be that we're wobbling a bit side to side on the foot. All these things are fine, but if we have maybe have this intention of heel, Outer edge of the foot across the hall, hold of the ball of the foot. Good. Got a breath or two. Very nice. Hold on, come down and have a shake out. And then let's go into a forward bend where we're doing that one where we sweep our arms around so we're a bit less um, focused on the feet. So sink into your heels, come down, and then just. Think about this being a really sort of loose, what is it, loose and free forward bend where you could, if you like, sweep your arms around. Obviously, if that's not feeling so good for you today, don't just do that. That's nice. But yeah, lovely. And then once you've done that a few times, you might just want to settle in the center for a breath or two. <sighs> Good. Very nice. And then sinking into your heels, rolling back up into standing. And then we're going to focus back in on the feet again when we come up. And so we quite often do these movements, but I want to just combine it a little bit with breathing. So I'm going to do one foot at a time. So you're going to be coming up onto the ball of one foot and lifting your heel as you breathe in. And as you exhale, you're going to bring your heel back down. We'll do that four times on the right foot and then four times on the left. So breathing in, come up onto the ball of your foot, your heel lifts. As you exhale, bring your heel back down onto the floor. Do that three more times, breathing in, 
breathing out. Just try and keep the rest of the body soft and relaxed. Breathing in, breathing out. Our body. <laughs> breathing in, lost the ability to count. Is that three or four? This is three. Three, thank you. Three. Okay, and your fourth one. So breathing in, coming up onto the ball of your foot, and then exhale, lowering your heel. Good. And then we do the same thing on the other side. So breathing in, coming up onto the ball of the foot and trying to feel wide across the whole, whole of the ball of the foot. As you exhale and lower your heel, try and plant the middle of your heel on the ground. So breathing in, up onto the ball of your foot, breathing out, sinking into your heel, the middle of your heel. One, two, three. Good. And then four. So that's all quite easy in terms of the balance. We're now going to do the same thing with both feet together and with the breathing as well. Just let your arms stay sort of loose and relaxed. So yeah, if you need to have a little, yeah, maybe, maybe have a little shake out. And actually maybe before we do that, just come on to the top of each um, toe. I'm holding onto the wall to do this. Oh, good. So the same thing. We'll do this four times up and down and then the fifth time we'll stay up in a balance and take our arms up. So just have a look at your feet, make sure they're well organized and then breathing in, coming up onto the balls of the feet. And then as you exhale, lowering your heels, seeing if you can plant the middle of your heels onto the ground. And again, breathing through your nose, unless you've got a fever or a cold. That's two, three, breathing in. And just a sort of breathing out, sort of a long, sort of slow, relaxed breathing. Number four, good. Number five. Now this time we'll stay up so we can breathe in to come onto the balls of our feet. And then if you feel steady, you can let your arms float up. And then maybe just that's it. Keep your awareness with the flow of your breath. Letting the breath come in, feeling the breath leave you. And again, just trying to feel wide across the balls of your feet. Good. When you're ready to come down, as your heels reach the ground, you're going to sweep your arms down into a forward bend. Let your head go. <laughs> We're all right there. So, nearly all the way forwards onto your head. Was that it? So just, yeah, a couple of breaths in your forward bend. Lovely. And then, yes, from your forward bend, you can roll up into standing. And then we're going to do a little bit in standing where we're stepping forwards on the mat. So make sure you've got some space to step a foot forwards. And you can give your legs a shake out to start with. And we'll start by a little bit of swaying from side to side. So if you're standing on your mat, again, feet a little distance apart, start by a little bit of swaying from side to side. And from doing this, you might then decide which foot you want to step forward. So you're then going to step one foot forwards. And then you're going to start to rock your weight forwards and back. Good. That's it. So the weight comes into the front foot. We come up onto the ball of the back foot and then the heel of the front foot. Good. Very nice. And then eventually you're going to settle down here. You're just trying to feel steady and planted through both feet, both feet pointing forwards. And then if we can Maybe just feel where the pelvis is. <laughs> I use my hands, why don't you too? And then can we swing our arms a bit, but not let the pelvis move? So the shoulders and the head and the arms can move. So this feeling of rotation from the waist up. And in a moment, we're going to fold forwards and we're going to come into a twist here. So we're just going to let that go, let the arms go, let the front knee bend and leaning forward. So you're coming to lean onto your bent front leg, either with your hands or with your elbow of your, your front leg arm. And then make sure your back leg is straight, back leg straight, but not locked, that's it. And then bring your back leg hand onto the back of your pelvis. Good, so front knees bent, back leg straight. 
And then we're trying to turn in the direction of the back leg, not towards the back leg, but towards that side. So we're trying to feel wide across the front of the chest. And it might be that you release your bottom arm to the ground or your fingertips on your ankle or the floor and the other arm can you come up. So this feeling we're looking for, very nice, is of this rotation from the waist up. We're sort of steady and planted through the legs and from the waist down, good. It's really amazing, everyone. Well done, Marie, just really release that bottom arm. Up, oh, good, lovely. <laughs> That's really nice. And then untwist and let yourself flop forwards over your bent front leg. Let your head go, let your arms go if you like. <sighs> and then you're going to be sinking into your back heel and coming back up into standing. <sighs> good. And it looks like it. And that looks very nice. I just noticed that. that I know you're absolutely right. <laughs> but it's very, you know, it's very easy in that one to be hanging on, I think, because there's a lot to think about. So we're going to come on to the other side. So come back into standing. Come back to a little bit of swaying from side to side. And then just obviously um, registering which foot is going to step forwards. I've turned around, so I'm going to be turning towards the floor soon. So Marie, you've got quite a wide, interesting, yeah, you've got quite yeah. a wide side stride. Yeah. I would try to have something be slightly less wide sideways and maybe slightly longer along your mat. Yeah, okay. yeah, try that. It's just interesting in relation to your bridge pose. Okay. I mean, it's not a problem, but it's just maybe mm. you could try different. Okay, so again, from rocking our weight forwards and back, then let's settle in standing. So first of all, we've got our knees straight, but not locked. And that's when we do our sort of swinging arms. Good. And again, this feeling that we're not moving below the pelvis. So maybe just this little bit of, that is awareness of rotation, that we're moving the ribs and the shoulders, which is what we do in our forward bend in a moment. Just how, you know, how this feels otherwise. Good. Okay. And then bending your front knee. So keeping your back leg straight, bending your front knee, folding forwards. I think what I didn't say on the other side is at this point, we're trying to keep our spine quite long and flat. So we're not going as low as possible. We're just lengthening out through the spine, through the back of the neck. And the back leg hand comes onto the back of the pelvis. And we're turning in the direction of that back leg, not to look towards the back leg, Trying to keep open across the front of the chest, releasing the bottom arm. So the bottom arm could hang, or your fingers could rest on your shin or your ankle or the floor or your foot. And the top arm could come up towards the ceiling. Let me just see how it feels to have a few breaths here. Good. I'm trying to feel wide. It looks yes, amazing, everyone. Well done. Yeah, it's very nice with the arm that time. Really. <laughs> Good. <sighs> Lovely. And whenever you've had enough in the twist, you then untwist and you flop towards the floor, let your head go. And in this forward bend, you could, I was going to say, enjoy the stretch of your legs or just feel the stretch of your legs. Okay. I think that made a difference then to the feet. I don't know. What did, what did it feel like? Not the same. But... Not the same. Well, that... <laughs> Very... Yeah, I mean, you look quite steady wherever you are. So maybe what it does is it would maybe just challenge, you know, if you're yeah, quite steady with your feet wider, it could yeah. possibly just sort of challenge your focus. And um, So we're going to do something else. You have a little shake out. We're going to do something else from the same foot position. Um, I'm just wondering, I don't think I, maybe I'll show you. Um, what we're going to do this time is you're going to come into a forward bend. And you can look on Zoom as well. And then you're going to come down into this one. We come down into the sprint position. And we're going to go in and out of that three times. After the third time, we're going to then lengthen out on hands and knees and then come into dog. But I'll talk you through that. So um, it doesn't seem too alarming. So, um, so come back and step your first foot forwards. And again, yeah, do a little bit of, so yeah, so in this okay, one, I'll try, yeah. yeah, so in this one, Marie, it probably would be good not to okay. have such, but it might be, it might be good to have the longer stride, but not so yeah. wide, because, yes, yeah, so if you're shifting your weight forwards and back, 
the same thing. We start off with the front knee bent. And this time we start off by folding forwards, either resting onto your front leg thigh or releasing all the way down so that you're, yeah, you're letting your head go. And then you're going to see what's it like if you start to bend your back knee. So of course your back heel comes up, but I'd like you to try and keep the whole of your front foot on the floor. Yeah, so that's it. Can your back knee, your back knee may not come onto the ground, that's fine. And then reverse that movement, go back. Let the back leg straighten, come back up here. If you're finding it hard to get your front, let your front foot stay on the floor, you might need to have a little bit more distance between your feet. And do this three times, going down and back up again. Good, and try to let, make sure your knees are sort of going forwards over your feet, everything sort of ankles, feet and knees are all in line. Good. And then let's see if we've, I'm not sure what three is actually, but the next time you come down to the floor, you're then going to come forwards and let your front heel come off the ground. So your front knee comes onto the ground and then your back knee come off the ground. So you lengthen that leg up. And then from here, we're going to come into dog pose. So you could do that from hands and knees or you could go immediately from here. So planting your hands down, stepping into dog. And if dog feels a little bit long, then just organise yourself in dog, walking your feet in. <sighs> All your hands in. So have a few breaths in dog, and then from dog, we will walk our hands into our feet, into a forward bend and roll back up into standing. I was <laughs> just then thinking how nice it feels to be in dog pose. So if that's the case for you, enjoy dog. And also enjoy your forward bend. So when you arrive back in your forward bend, have a few breaths, enjoy that. Roll up into standing. Good. And let's have a little shake out before we do this whole little thing on the other side. So what we're thinking about when we do these movements, so hopefully, unlike me, you can remember which foot you need to have forwards this time. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. So see if you can remember which foot you need to have forwards this time. Come back to a little bit of shifting forwards and back. So we're really thinking about in these movements, partly this lengthening through the back of the body, partly mobilizing the feet, and also this sort of um, bending of the knees and the ankles. <clears throat> in line with each other. So at this point, before we start to go down, it's probably helpful to look at your feet and make sure your feet are pointing forwards. And then starting to bend your front knee and folding forwards, coming into that forward bend where the back leg is straight. And then just starting to explore that movement when we start to bend the back knee. And it's a big stretch for those back toes. If we're going to bring our back knee all the way onto the floor, the toes really have to bend a lot. So it might not happen. And then reverse that movement. So start to straighten your back leg again. Come back into the forward bend, letting your head go. Good. And then again, start to bend the back knee. The back heel comes up. Maybe the back knee comes onto the floor, maybe not. Good. And then go back again into your forward bend. Let your head go. You can do this once more. So we'll, like I said last time, I wasn't sure what three was. So coming down, have the back knee. So maybe we'll go back up once more and back down once more. That would be more than enough, I think. Good. Make sure you let your head go each time you come into the forward bend. And then back down onto the floor, letting the back knee maybe come down. And then we're going to move forwards. So the front heel comes up, we let the front knee come onto the ground and we lengthen the back leg out behind us. So it's a sort of funny lunge, but our front knees on the ground rather than our foot. And then from here, can you plant your hands and step up into dog pose? Now this time, we're not going into back into standing, we're gonna stay in dog for a few breaths and then fold down into child. So again, if you need to adjust your hands or your feet in your dog pose, please do so. And also if you want to come out of dog and go back into dog, you could do, Marie looks like a very long dog. So I don't know whether that looks quite nice. It looks nice, yeah. I, mean, I think the long dog's good for you because you're quite tall. 
looks very, yeah, it's nice to see them. Yeah, Linda, what's it like if you do a slightly longer dog? I'm just thinking, like, oh, that's, yeah. I don't know, see how it feels. I was just, you know, it's interesting to look at different people. Yeah, so from your dog pose, then just sort of when you've had enough dog, settling in child pose or kneeling, just to be quiet for a few breaths. So gathering your attention into your breathing and just feeling the movement of your breath in your body, wherever you notice the breathing. Feeling the breath come in, feeling the breath leaving you. And from the child pose or kneeling, we're then going to come and sit in cobbler pose and was I thinking possibly facing the long edge of your mat and leaning back onto your hands and just seeing how cobbler pose feels. Good. That's it. So if you lean back onto your hands, you can just see how it feels to let your knees be heavy, you know, just they, they go where they go. And they've got we can you know force them to go anywhere. And then from here, we're going to move on into pinwheels. So let one knee come on top of the other knee and slide the top leg back. And let's do a bit of our pinwheel circling. So really good. All the hips, pelvis, and back. Good. And what I thought we would do today is a little bit of our pinwheel twist and the one where we open through the front of our body because we haven't done that much. We've done quite a lot of forward bending. And I thought it'd be nice to do something when we open. So from circling, we're going to come lean on this arm. So the knee that's going out to the side, we're going to lean on that arm. And already we're letting our weight shift onto that knee, that, that leg where the knee's going out to the side. And we just start to do these little, quite easy turning movements. We can swing our arm, or we can trace a bit of a circle. It's a semicircle, really, isn't it, from our back toes through to our fingers. And as we're making these little movements, really feel how your pelvis comes along. Yeah? So this back leg, the leg we're turning away from, that side of the pelvis may move with you. We can then start to slap the hand onto the shoulder. I think you all know this one, so we spend too long preliminaries we can slap our hand onto our shoulder we can then sink into our supporting arm and yeah bring our fingers up towards the ceiling our gaze up and we'll repeat this i think maybe three times so coming back down all the way out bring your fingers all the way back then hand onto your shoulder sink into your arm opening through the front of your body so it's just this sense in this one of arm oh, body Quite a nice feeling of openness. So how's the neck? Is the neck okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, good. So hand, and just when I when I take my arm up, I'm just sort of following my fingertips with my eyes in a way that's comfortable. Now I'm thinking I can't even count to three now, so I think maybe one more. <laughs> so. Good. And then from here when you come down, come into your pinwheel forward bend. So fold down over that knee that's going out to the side and just have a couple of quiet breaths there. Let the breath come in, let the breath leave you. And from the pinwheel forward bend, we can walk our hands back in towards us. We can revisit cobbler pose by sliding this back knee on top 
of the knee we were just holding over and come back into cobbler pose and you can just see how it feels here so again we'll spend perhaps just ever so slightly longer in cobbler pose but yeah if you feel that you want to do some of these sort of rocking type movements you can do um i don't know circling folding forwards what else is there and maybe some of these side lengthening ones we haven't really done any side bendy things today Whatever, whatever we like. And then we'll be moving on into side two of pinwheels. So let it lean back on the hands, let the other knee come on top, slide the top leg back, and come to a little bit of circling here. And so as we did on the other side, we'll sort of start to move into those twisty movements. So the first thing we do is this knee that's coming out to the side, we lean onto that arm, we let our weight shift over onto that side of the pelvis. And we can start quite easily just with this, maybe drawing a semicircle, very sort of easy through the arm, from the back toes to the fingers. And then this arm can start to slap onto our shoulder. We can slap our arm into our shoulder, we can sink down into our arm, we can follow our fingertips with our eyes up towards the ceiling and we can see if it's possible to, <laughs> to count to three, it doesn't really matter. Do this a few times, yeah. So it's this feeling of really letting the front of the body open and enjoying that movement. done this three or four times whatever you like just simply depending on how you're feeling right now then you're going to come into your pinwheel forward bend but if you want to do that again by all means you can do and then into your pinwheel forward bend And just a couple of quiet breaths in the pinwheel forward bend. So let the breath come in, let the breath leave you. We're going to walk our hands in towards us and then lean back on the arms so we can lengthen our legs out in front of us. And we're going to do a little bit more work around the hips, but also a bit more with, the, with just one more foot exercise. Be right with you. So what I'd like you to do from here is you're going to, doesn't matter which side, you're going to bend one knee and stand that foot on the floor. But if you look at me, I've got quite a big distance between my long leg and my bent knee. I'm leaning onto my long leg arm and I've got my bent leg hand on that knee. Why you've got a big distance is you're doing this movement, you're letting your knee come in towards your leg and away from the leg. So Marie, I think you need your foot further away from your pelvis here. But yeah, stand, stand on your foot for a bit, that's it. Yeah, just try this, it's probably easier if your foot's further from your pelvis, yeah. So we're just trying to find quite an easy rocking movement, yeah. It might just be you need your, that's it. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't feel quite right, but anyway. Yeah, it might just be that you need to take your foot wider to the side, possibly. Yeah, possibly try. Just have a little play around. It's just to find these two movements. So one way your knee can roll in and one way your knee can come out. But you're not expecting your knee to go that far to the ground because the foot's quite wide out. What I'd like you to do from here is the next time the knee comes out to the side, is then to slide your foot in towards your pelvis. You're coming into sort of tree pose or Janu Chasana position. And just see how this feels for a moment. Now, it might be that you want to stay leaning back on your arms. It might be that you want to see how it feels to fold a little bit over. If you're folding, you'll be thinking about folding over your long leg. But we're not going to spend too long here because this is quite a challenging movement. 
So what we're going to do from here, if you want to stay there a little bit longer, you can. What we are going to do from here is swap arms. We're going to lean through the bent arm now, and you're going to use your other hand to catch the outside edge of your foot. That's it. So it's opposite hand and foot. And we've got opposite hand and foot. And then can we swing this leg a little bit from side to side or with opposite hand and foot? Good. So, and this is where we're going to come to, good. This is where we're going to come to toes because you're going to bring this ankle somewhere onto your other leg. And then we're going to thread our fingers between our toes. Okay, so it doesn't really matter where, as long as it's comfortable, you know, being a comfortable place, just can you thread your fingers between your toes? <laughs> <laughs> and then if you can, you're doing a bit of massaging. So I've got my, my hand is coming onto the underside of my foot, which I think would be, yeah, it would be a bit hard to do it the other way, yeah. So it's opposite hand and foot. And just that's it, doing a bit of massaging. That one's tricky, that one looks like <laughs> Oh, have you got your little, so little toe in between the little, Little finger in between yeah, the little toe. Yeah, that one, one yeah. Get through. That one, yeah. Okay, you've got to put a bit more. Good. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of massage in there. Good. Okay. Then we can release, see if we can get extricate the fingers from the toes. Give the toes a bit of a wiggle. You're going to come back to this, bringing the foot on the floor. And then come back to the knee coming in towards the long leg. Yeah, so knee rocks in towards the long leg. And then what is it like if you were to come a bit more towards Virasana? So can, is it possible to come onto the top of your foot? Yeah, and how close can that foot? We might not come, you know, what's, what possibilities are there in terms of bringing the foot, that's it, in towards you? So some of you, I'm just going to say, at this point here, there's a few things you could do. So some of you might want to, if I go side on, some of you might want to think about folding forwards over your long leg. You could bend the long leg and stand that foot on the floor and go back a little bit in the last now. If you're feeling very sort of lopsided here, you could come into more of a um, pinwheel again and see how that feels. So you've just got a, couple, a few options there. Yeah, so you've got sort of going back option, or you've got, you know, this is very easy for you, you've got this sort of folding forwards option. Okay. And then let's, probably not want to stay anywhere, any of these places too long, come out of this by lengthening out your non virasana leg, rolling onto that hip, lengthening the other leg. Okay, let's <coughs> go along on the floor. And we've got to do the whole thing on the other side. So let's, let's see how he's on this side. It'd be interesting, Marie. So from mm. here, we're taking the other leg now out to the side. And we've got our hand. We're, so we're leaning onto the long leg arm. And we're seeing how it is with our hand on our knee. That's it. It's a bit easier that side. Thank you. I can't get it done much harder. No, I can't. Yeah. I think when the foot's what further, you know, when the foot's out to the side and further away from the pelvis, then it doesn't go to the side. So it's just a bit of rocking from side to side with the leg. Good. And then the next time the knee's out to the side, then slide your foot in towards your long leg. So you're coming into this sort of bit like um, tree pose, that's it, a like tree pose and sitting. And again, it's up to you if you wanted to see what it was like to try to fold forwards a little bit over your long leg, you could do, but that, that is, that can be quite challenging. It's fine if you want to let your knee bend a bit, but equally you might just want to lean back onto your hands. And then the next thing we did from this was to lean onto the bent leg arm and then catch the bent leg foot with the opposite hand. So it's the outside edge of the bent leg we catch with the opposite hand. Oh, you could do that, Marie, but we were doing oh, this sorry, swing yeah, leg first of all. <laughs> I, yeah, well, I was doing this on my own. I was doing the two things at once, and I thought it was just too, it's too much to try and thread the fingers and swing the leg. So do a bit of swinging the leg, because this is really nice for the hip. And I went on a really big run yesterday, so I was sort of doing all these hip, one of my hips felt a bit funny afterwards. So I was doing all these, this was quite nice. Yeah. 
and that's it. And then you can come to a place where you're maybe bringing your ankle onto your long leg thigh, just in a place that's comfortable, or your shin, and then you're threading your fingers between your toes. So this is your opposite hand and foot. So the palm of your hand is facing the sole of your foot. I mean, you can do it the other way, but I think this is maybe it helps us to do a bit more of a massage, yeah. And then just a bit of sort of massaging, circling the ball of your foot. And we're not going to let, the, <laughs> let these lovely feet go to waste. We're then, before we finish, we're going to, well, we're going to come and finish up in standing. It's coming into a balance. And I thought it would just be interesting to see how it feels finishing like that. So as we're finishing off here, you could think about, I was going to suggest either tree pose or the sort of dancer or stalk pose, the one where you catch the top of your foot. Um, so thanks for your legs. Oh, sorry, thank you. Everyone's reminding me that we haven't done, which is <laughs> very good. So come before we do this, because this will obviously help if you choose to do stalk or dancer. Ooh. Knee coming in towards the long leg. Good. And then what's it like, you know, to think about coming towards the top of the foot? And we might not come all the way, that's fine. If the knee feels at all unhappy, we don't want to force that. And just see how this feels. So again, if it's, yeah, you can go back. Sometimes it's, you know, it might be helpful too. I find you, you can go back with the leg long, absolutely. Just notice what happens to your pelvis, because sometimes you tend to roll a bit more towards the long leg side. So you can bend the long leg back a little bit. You could, yes, exactly, you could fold forwards in this one if you, if you liked. And then, yes, thank you. That's, <laughs> but let's have the reminder that, that we were doing this one, because if you are going to, so take your time, lengthen both legs up. I'll just remind you. So if you don't know what the I'm talking about, the stalk balance is it's very much like what we were just doing with the legs, which is why we're doing it. So this, you know, this would be the other, balance, the other option as well as tree pose. Um, yeah, so I was thinking, if we're coming, coming into a balance at this point in class, we're, we're just thinking about something sort of settling and grounding. So I would suggest choose whichever balance you feel drawn to doing in a settling way rather than a sort of, oh, I'm going to challenge myself. You could settle in standing. You could just do a little bit of swaying. You could choose which foot you're going to stand on. And then you're going to start to make your way onto your chosen foot. And then whether you're coming, catching the top of your foot or you're going to come on into tree pose, which I think I will do. And then if you're in tree, you could have your hands in prayer pose at your heart. If you're in stalk, you could have one hand on your breastbone. And just letting yourself settle. Settle and breathe. And if you like to let your arm or your arms grow upwards, you can do. Again, that's it. No rush, no pressure. Just seeing if you can feel settled and quiet in your body and mind and breathing. So we can gather our hand or hands back to our heart. If you want to just take the time, maybe what we could do on this side for side two is you, and I didn't say it for the first side, is just again start by looking at the feet. You don't necessarily need to do too much to them, but just to see them on the floor, maybe spread the toes out a little bit, settle through the base of the big toe, the base of the little toe, and the heels. Good. Or the heel. And then start bringing your weight onto your second leg. Coming Good. into your balance, perhaps starting with the hands at the heart.
feeling the flow of your breath. Letting your arms grow upwards. Or maybe just finishing once more with the hands back at the heart. You come down, give each leg a little shake out, and we will finish with a little bit of lying down, but we are sort of towards the end of the time of the class. So if you've got time to stay for a few more minutes, do. I think it would be good to maybe just settle in standing. But yes, if you want to do a forward bend, do. And then we're just, we'll settle in standing for a few breaths and we'll lie down for a few breaths. So if you're still in standing, just let yourself sway a little bit, limbs stay lying down, let yourself sway a little bit and settling. And what we'll do wherever you are is bring one, once you've settled, is bring one hand on your chest and one hand onto your belly. And just seeing if you can settle with the feeling of your breath in your body. Feeling the rise and fall of the chest and the rise and fall of the belly. And then if you'd like to take this sort of quiet breathing into lying down, you're still standing up then it might be nice to do that just for a couple of minutes you can use a blanket probably superfluous today mm -hmm. if you do okay. we're settling down Again, when you settle down onto your backs, you can either let your arms rest on the floor, or you can let your hands rest on the front of your body. Letting yourselves be sort of quiet and settled, feeling the flow of your breath as it moves through you.
you everyone. It's gonna have to have a recording.